Actually, before I do that, one thing to note is if you notice, I've got lines, marking lines across here, and I've also got where the dowels, I've also got marking lines on. So that meant once I drilled the holes into this, these wood first, I then placed the wood where I needed it to be, and then drew the lines, and then when you, when we drilled it, again using our, our bit, here we are, our little marking gauge, so we know where the halfway mark is for everything. Okay, so we don't have to measure this direction, only the depth. Okay. As you can see, that's a bit of a snug fit, and because this is at an angle, to get it straight down here, we need that this wood to be at an angle, which we cut with a circular saw. This is the front panel, and again, we use the same method of marking the lines against where we want the dowels. You can see all the marks in. Okay, and then we're ready for the for the top piece. Okay, so we've got the front piece in, and now we need the control panel. Now, one thing to um, remember is that the control panel is using the same MDF, which is 18 mil thick, but we're also putting some perspex on top, plexiglass, acrylic, whatever you want to call it, on top of the control panel, and that's three mil. So. We're going to have 18 plus 3, yeah, which is 21 mil. And if we get um, any kind of moulding or whatever on the front, it's going to be too big. So what I've done is, on the front, I've used the straight bit on the router and cut a 3 mil recess down here. Okay, and there's the top on, um, and it, we've got a little bit of leeway, so if, if a little bit out with the glass or the placement of anything, then we're fine. Obviously, this looks loose at the minute, and it doesn't look straight, and there's a bit of a, a tiny gap here, simply because the wood hasn't been pulled in yet properly. Um, it's just in a temporary loose place, and to, to hide all of these edges, uh, I could have put moulding across here, uh, but instead, I bought this aluminium angle, which is um, inside measurement of 18 mil again, or three quarters inch, whatever you want to call it. And when that goes on top, it will fit the bottom of the wood here, leaving a three mil gap on the top to put the plexiglass in. Okay. That'll be repeated at the back there and because this wood is at the same height all the way across and this metal is a little bit higher when the glass runs down here it'll butt onto the inside of the aluminium and it'll be a nice neat finish. Okay, And through the top there'll be a um, on the speaker panel there'll be um, a little hole, well, a slit routed across and the glass will fit up into the hole maybe five mil, a uh, quarter of an inch whatever um, and then placed inside of here and then the control panel slid in and that'll be it nice and tight really. Okay so next it's on to the speaker case. Okay then for the speaker um, panel, what we need is the wood to run down this angle, so obviously it needs to be cut at an angle, it doesn't matter about inside here because that is the level of the glass here, so all we're bothered about is this cut, so again we use the sliding bevel to get our angle, 
and using that I was then able to cut the angle of the wood which happened to be the the furthest reach of the um what do you call it? The circular saw as well. Okay. Okay then with the speaker um panel in place obviously this isn't put in straight up just put it in temporary it does go really really flush with the wood uh, and to get it even better what you do is you go around the back and make slide it around till you can get it a perfect fit just in case your your, your angle cut wasn't correct let's go around the back okay now what we have here a little bit dark no yeah it's definitely a little bit dark but um, in order to access, to take it out without putting any screws on the front, we've got a screw through the wood here in an angle into the wood and further at the top, does that look better? Um, we have a, an angle bracket which is screwed in so there's nothing ever visible on, on the underside. Obviously I haven't cut the holes yet for the speakers, that'll come later. When the speakers arrive, that is. Okay, I just want to quickly talk about the back door. Um, what I want to do is just have something very simple um, to open and shut for whenever I need access to PC, which shouldn't be that often. The same as I want need access to the door that often. So, on the inside of one, I put another bit of wood in, um, which was the MDF, which is the same width of as the battens and that would allow me to put hinges on the door and here we have the door here and with just some kitchen hinges I had lying around so what you do is you um, there is a set size and positions but I don't know because I'm not a carpenter or a kitchen fitter so I just placed it so that the the hinge would fit down and not snap in which was like that and I routed a hole um, the depth of what was required uh, using using the router and fitted it. Okay. Next up is the placement of the things on the control panel. Okay, I've got the links to these um, layouts on the video hopefully, uh, but they're from slagcoin.com, marvellous name. Now these I'm using the I believe it's a modified Sega Player 2 layout uh, which gives it's about nine centimeter gap between the joystick and the first button and it's a slightly offset for the first two buttons um, which, which lets you put your fingers on nicely when you're playing and also it's the, the gap between the top and the bottom buttons felt the nicest so what I did is I just printed out all of the different layouts which were there which I knew I wanted. Um, I didn't want the Street Fighter 2 which is in a, in a straight line or the American version because the, the gaps between the buttons are just too big and I did we tried with the 63mm joystick gap which is about here uh, and that felt just too close keeping all the joystick and the buttons here. Um, so that looked a good place, yeah. Um, obviously, you can put much layer you want, but these have been tried and tested, okay. And I also want to make sure that the the gap on the side here uh, wouldn't interfere with my hand. Same on this side, you can move it closer uh, because there, there are only buttons. The only thing that you need to worry about is when you're putting your hands on, you'd have your little finger, okay. So, and that's really how you test it, just you know, put your fingers on and you can see that this is just a nice layout for me. So the next thing is, can I fit a trackball in? Um, and I've just been playing with various layouts, heights of the joysticks. Uh, obviously when you're putting this, the control panel on for the buttons and the joystick, you don't want it too far down because you'll not be able to rest your hand on so what you want is somewhere um, comfortable 
so that you, you can rest your arm on when you're playing like that. Okay. Now, to print these to scale, you get the image and the full size image and save it, whether it's 96 or 300 dpi, it doesn't matter. And whatever the resolution is, for example, if it was 2000 pixels, you divide it by the dpi, which in my case was 300, and that gives you a size in inches, which in this case happened to be about 9.3 inches. So then what you do is you then paste that image into your paint program. Uh, I, I used um, Inkscape, um, which is a vector art program, and told it to resize it and kept the proportions to exactly 9.3 inches and that made it's only actually the circle which is visible which is uh, 82 millimeters I think it's three and a half inches something like that because um, I plan on using the the U-Track with the mini pack um, from Ultramark uh, this housing here is uh, where the actual um, body of the trackball goes underneath so what, what you need to place it so that it doesn't interfere with any of the button housings and also that when you place your fingers it's not going to interfere with the trackball okay so you can either put it nice and low or nice and high so I think what I'll be doing is probably trialing this out but what I'll do first is I'll just buy it and then try it again because obviously the it looks okay there and it looks okay here uh, it should be fine and then I'm gonna have play one start play two start and I'll possibly put one or two buttons here for mouse button one and two so what I want to do is try and get away with having loads of control buttons and instead using the shift functionality inside of the um, IPAC controller and what that lets you do is when you press this, the say the player one key that becomes a shift so then you can press other buttons for example I can press um, player one hold it down and press number one button and that could be my pause and um, black one could be um, quit this one could be exit yeah and at the front on the kick panel I'm gonna get some square illuminated buttons for coin one and coin two so I'm not going to put the coin slot in, just the buttons here to, for the coins for player one and two. And probably somewhere hidden under here, I'll put a little tiny switch which will um, do the reset for the computer, which I'll, I'll tell it to switch off the computer. I'll, I think I'm going to be using the Sanwar. And I, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, people say it's the best joystick for fighters, but. I'm, I'm more of a shooter so I should have been using the Saimitsu but when you look at the mountain options for the joysticks the Sanwa seems to fit better and I can put the, the S panel on which means it'll mount underneath nice and easy and for the buttons um, I did think about using the Saimitsu buttons on here or the Sanwa but I probably the Saimitsu because they're a little bit less sensitive but the problem is they're meant for metal cases and this is 19 mil so I'll have to recess under the wood and only leave about four or five mil on the top so instead unfortunately I'll be getting the, the hub competition buttons which have a depth of about that much and it'll go all the way under nicely okay and I'm gonna put the LED in to backlight it but I'm not I'm not gonna buy the LED option gets like the 20 pound and in fact it's a it's a bit of um breadboard with six leds which cost 50 pence in total if that to to make and it's dead simple especially nowadays you can buy leds with um five volt leds with a built-in resistor so you don't have to work out resistance um for to make sure they don't get too much power going through them and they'll just be plugged into a molex um, I maybe put a, a video on how to do that. It's straightforward and it's at twenty pounds just extortionate really for what it is. Okay. Um